Welcome to Business Class. I'm Steve Ekstrom from Learn Tourism, a nonprofit academy dedicated to advancing the tourism industry through innovative training and sustainable practices. Our mission? To empower travel professionals and communities with the knowledge they need to create meaningful, authentic, and sustainable tourism experiences. Ready to join us on this journey? Visit learntourism.org and start making a difference today. My name is Santiago Rodriguez. I am a PhD uh, in tourism, specialized on enhancing local stakeholders to attract international markets that match the value of local destinations. And I basically author the newsletter, The Tourism Practitioner. I mentor academic platforms for tourism education, and I work on tourism insights and marketing with international de uh, destinations around the world. So glad to have you here in business class. Really interesting to have this conversation. Looking forward to it. I'm originally from Ecuador. Long story short, I'm originally from Ecuador, where I worked for several years on the side of uh, destination sites, national parks, local governments, uh, local development communities, income to operators. And then after a while, I decided, well, I, I, I want to also explore how the other side from the perspective of the Ecuadorian destination works as source markets. And then I decided uh, to come to Europe. I had opportunity to make my PhD here in Belgium. And uh, my PhD was uh, precisely how to enhance local stakeholders to attract the type of tourism they want for sustainable development. I did my PhD, completed my PhD in Belgium. I went back to Ecuador. I founded an uh, academic cooperation platform between universities to keep using research to, to teach. And then I returned to Europe again. And I'm currently in Germany, working with companies from all over the place and doing basically three things. I'm the author of a newsletter where I share practical tools and systems for tourism practitioners. Second, I am the mentor of the inter-university platform I founded, and I work with a marketing uh, insights and marketing company working with many destinations in the U.S. and Europe, helping them uh, make better decisions, more informed decisions or on their marketing and development strategy. Why do you think more people haven't studied tourism? More people haven't? Great question, because that reminds me when I myself started and decided to, to study tourism. And back then when I was much younger, actually I wanted to study tourism because at the end of the day, what I wanted to do is to travel and meet people. And it, it's good, it's valid, but very naive at the same time, because actually I realized with the time that I wanted to study tourism because I wanted to become a tourist. And it's just like saying, I want to study medicine because I want to become the patient or I want to be a pilot. <laughs> because I want to be the passenger. And of course, you get involved into tourism and you realize it's a lot more than that. People, most people see only the superficial part of this complex phenomenon than tourism is. And, and what is that? It's either the tour guides or the travel agencies or the front desk of the hotel. But many don't understand that behind all these service providers, there are a lot of things, not only within these companies, but within the city and the region, policy making challenges of all kinds. And most of all, and most importantly, the host communities that are experiencing those tourism inflows. So unfortunately, just to give you an example and some perspective, the university where I did my PhD here in, in, in Europe, in Belgium, it's called Cayo Leuven. It was founded before the Europeans even discovered America. So more than 500 years. It's that old, this university. But the, this discipline of tourism only exists from around 30 or 40 years ago. So even in these very established universities, tourism is a very young discipline, as an academic discipline. Because of that, a very in-depth development of the knowledge of, of tourism and, 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 the, uh, and the formal understanding and scientific knowledge of tourism is pretty recent. So many people still see tourism as a superficial activity. And that's why in, in the media sometimes, we see people trying to differentiate themselves and say, I'm not a tourist, I'm a traveler. Okay, but it's at, at the end of the day, it's the same thing. Yeah, that's why the situation hasn't contributed yet that tourism is considered as a more formal, structural, 
phenomenon that has a big implication on societies. And that's why you see as well that many times in universities, for example, the career of tourism is within the faculty of economy. Or in my case, when I studied tourism, I was the first promotion of, of my university back then in my hometown. We were inside the faculty of philosophy. And in other careers, tourism is within the faculty of marketing and other within economy. So it doesn't have its own body in the mind and the perspective of many um, academics yet. And that, of course, brings also to the case that at the state, either the regional, local level, regional level or state level, you also have tourism sometimes within another ministries or you have the, the Ministry of Tourism or the Office of Tourism. But the leaders of these offices, and I'm not trying, of course, to undermine any profession. Every profession is very respectful. But in my experience, I found people from architecture, from economics, from marketing, and even people from sports managing the tourism office of a city, a region, a country. And, and that's great. Every profession has its, its great value. But tourism is a very complex um, phenomenon that needs to be able to understand different parts of different other disciplines. So this challenge of tourism being uh, a complex phenomenon to tackle has made that people had oversimplified right, what tourism is. And it's actually, that's why initiatives like yours, the, the Tourism Academy, uh, it's a great initiative because it's actually helping people to better understand and reflect about these, these challenges that uh, uh, tourism make destinations face. And yeah, I think that's one of the reasons. First of all, the superficial perspective that many people have on tourism, thinking tourism is only about travel, about leisure, about fun. And the old, and from the other side, also the perspective, not only from the public, but in the perspective from authorities who don't understand as well the deep impact that tourism has in society. What has been the most important lesson you've learned in your career? The most important lesson I've learned in my career, and that actually after my doctoral research, in so many ways, I was able to confirm with different stakeholders at different levels, because it involved conversations with people in Latin America, in Europe, at the market, at the front end, selling the products all the way in the middle from different sectors is actually that the key for tourism to really become a force of change requires from people that are capable of becoming great orchestrators, people capable of facilitating collective action. Because tourism, in contrast of other industries, and I say these industries actually trying to highlight that tourism should not be called an industry, because that's part of the misconception of tourism is. So if you think about tourism as an industry, what do industries do? I mean, they create products or services and deliver it to the customer. But tourism is the other way around. In tourism, you have to actually have to bring the customer and make the customer get involved in the experience to actually something be produced at that moment. And the tourism experience doesn't exist before or after. You cannot put the tourism experience in a box and deliver it to, to someone. And after the visitor returns, the experience, the product ends. All of this experience requires uh, great facilitators, great as, as I call them. And that's why we are lacking the most in the tourism sector. Because once again, people think of tourists and think of tour guides, people in travel agencies, sales administrators, all of them are necessary. But the real catalyzers for the success of any tourism initiative, either in the private sector or public sector, are people, leaders that can have this general vision, long-term, short-term vision. At the same time that they keep one eye on the vision, they can keep the other eye in today and understand how the different resources have to come together. The funds I have or I don't have, the stakeholders I play with, the challenges, the time I have, and how to uh, put them together to make a team, a company, a city reach their goals. This collective action connects very much with this other part of the most important lesson. And needs to really help people to understand that tourism is not an end, but it's only a means to something. We don't want to have busy tours just because the sake of having foreigners walking around our city. Um, 
just as in any other sector, you don't build a, you don't build a car just to have the pleasure to, to have the car built. It's, you, you build cars because you are going to use them for something. Tourism is the same thing. And the final goal of tourism is trying, or the final goal of people involving in tourism, in the bottom line, deep inside, is trying to improve their own lives. So it, it's very important that these collective actions or people that are capable of facilitating collective actions can help communities, teams, etc., to drive the efforts towards how to use tourism to improve people's lives. During COVID, a lot of destination marketers or destinations realized that they were responsible to their communities as opposed to simply being responsible to the tourist. And I say that because if you're responsible to the tourist, it's all about heads and beds. It's all about people in the hotel. What can you do to drive people in the hotel, regardless of the impact that it has on the community? In what ways do you see tourism being a source for good? In many ways. However, as the potential of tourism is great, the challenge to make it work is also great. And it can be a, a source for good in terms that you can actually use tourism to, first of all, make people, make local communities discover themselves and revalue themselves in the one hand. And in the other hand, to make people use tourism as a way to connect with others and bring this external perspective to find another way to discover yourself again. Because things that are like mundane for you or boring for you or not interesting for you because you grow up in that are so interesting and exciting for, for other people. So only this more uh, deeper meaning that tourism can provide to a community is already a great thing. Then, of course, how can you build on that um, and do and, and try to get the best from tourism while you at the same time Try to make sure that tourism, of course, is a good business, which is that, let's say, the main motivation that, that many people try to go into any sector, of course. But at the same time, how this business is also respectful with these interesting characteristics that others find in you as a host community, and how also this business is respectful with environment, which is the final scenario, the final layer where everything happens. With environment, I'm not only referring to the natural environment, but also to the built environment, which holds the representation and the uh, materialization of your culture. We're just having this simple conversation, and we are already touching in so many aspects that have to be considered and kept on their side when you are talking about why tourism development, the tourism challenges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's why this phenomenon is so challenging. But at the same time, very promising. When a community or a team or an enterprise gets really to make the connection between how to make money with a type of tourism that at the same time helps to identify and recover these local values, then that's a gold chest. Those are some of the ways how tourism can really be a force for good. But as I mentioned at the beginning, tourism holds big promises, but at the same time poses big challenges because of these multi aspects that you have to keep on their side at the same time. You mentioned the word values and that tourism gives communities a chance to showcase their values and also to attract visitors that share their values. Now, I'm thinking of the word over tourism and how that has really percolated to the top of the conversation in the last couple of years. Is, in your opinion, is it that places are getting too many visitors or are they just getting the wrong visitors? Before we dive back in, a quick word from our sponsor, Lorne Tourism, the nonprofit academy, where we're dedicated to transforming the tourism industry with four key services our cutting edge learning experience platform, which offers robust analytics and seamless updates, our custom course development, which ensures tailored learning solutions, subject matter experts who provide deep insights and valuable knowledge, and of course, our engaging speakers who are here to inspire and educate with impactful presentations. 
Discover how we can elevate your tourism education at learntourism.org. It depends on the case, but it could be a combination of both. Talking about the wrong visitors, it's really important to reflect once again from the beginning, why do I want to bring tourism? Then on, on the basis of that, okay, what's a visitor I want to attract? Because it's very hard to get the wrong visitor to do the right thing. Once you have implemented all your machinery, your processes, everything, and then you, are, you realize that the visitors you're bringing are not the ones that you wanted, it's very difficult to take that out because it takes years for a destination to, to build a reputation. Then it will take even more years to try to change that, that process, those effects. Yeah, what I always propose and what I'm always trying to talk about is just what you mentioned right now. The first thing we must ask as a destination company, whatever, is not what the market wants. It's what I want from tourism. Then what's the market that matches this? Fortunately, because of the size of travel nowadays and the size of world economy and everything, there's enough market for everybody. Because the goal of a destination is not to become the next Barcelona or Paris or whatever. You just need to get a healthy quantity of visitors to fuel the economy, to have this cultural exchange, to enrich your thoughts. So it, it's not a problem. And the other thing is that many, when I sit down with uh, um, DMOs or with companies or professionals and I, okay, what are your goals in terms of attracting tourism? The first thing they, they think is international. And that's great. International tourism has a lot of benefits. But maybe it's not the best place to start with. Many people forget domestic or forget neighbor countries, which sometimes present lower barriers to start with. Let's lower language barriers, distance, prices, etc. Yeah, the first thing that destinations should think of is what is the type of tourism I want. Therefore, what is the type of tourist that resonates with those values? Then I can start asking, okay, where are they? What are the marketing strategies I might use? Should I build something or not? Because, and that's also a, a large extent the fault of politicians that have used tourism, because talking about tourism is really nice, that have a used tourism as an easy way to promise things. But the first thing people think or talk about when we are talking about tourism development are two things, doing marketing and building something. Those two things, of course, are necessary. But they don't come, shouldn't come first in the process. Is you should put the horse first in front of, and then the coach. On the horse, the power that moves things is why you want this. You can believe I, I'll tell you a short story, but this is sad but true and happening in many destinations as well. And this is the case of having a marketing budget. So let's print a brochure, a poster. Let's go to a trade fair put nice pictures and behind there's nothing. And this is the case, I won't mention names of countries because this was at a national level. There was this country, very beloved one by me, that created this suddenly a new government, a new very strategic campaign, uh, campaign planner, the, the tourism uh, ministry. So they put all the money in the world to buy the best resources. They license a song of the Beatles, all you need is love. All you need is love. So they license the, the song of, of the Beatles. They create incredible videos, incredible content, incredible images. Uh, I was really moved the first time that I saw the camp because it was a, a message that was, was going really to the senses, to the emotions, to the sensations. And at the end, they even paid a video ad in the Super Bowl. So it was oh. fantastic was incredible. When you ask about, you ask to companies, what are governments lacking for tourism development? Most of them say they should do more and more marketing. So this was the wet dream of any tour operator. Our government is making such a great investment in marketing with this quite high quality campaigns and everything. But what happened? They forgot a little detail. After the Super Bowl and everything, what were the results in terms of sales? Crickets. Nothing. And why? Because they forget to put all the things that have to come after the marketing. It's so obvious, so basic. And you wouldn't never imagine that a government's body, so important body of, of a country, 
would be so superficial on a tourism strategy. They didn't implement a website where people could go to. They didn't implement a call center. They didn't organize the tour operators to see how will they connect the demand of all these campaigns with tour operators. And what was the argument of the people in charge at that time? No, no, we are the public sector. We don't care about sales. We do the marketing and the private sector. They are the ones who have to see how they do sales. It's a typical spray and pray approach. Do marketing for everybody and let's see who is able to catch something there. Once again, sad but true. And this happens from the highest levels of tourism organizations to the most local uh, levels as well. And that's why this, this is an example of starting putting the coach before the horses. And why? Of course, because it's the easiest way. Doing marketing is fun. It's nice getting into the content, traveling to trade fairs, talking with people. That's the nice part. The complicated part, once again, is to be able to coordinate these things. So you have two operators aligned in the vision of what you're going to promote. Two operators have coordinated with local service providers. Even better if all this service uh, value chain is connected with sustainability principles and all these things that have to be in place to really take advantage of any marketing campaign uh, you're going to do in the first place. When did you realize you love to travel? Oh, those are the, yeah, the, the, the earliest memories I have in my, in my mind. Fortunately, my father was a very curious and, and active person. I can remember myself endless hours just laying down on the back seat, looking through the window, my, my father driving and driving and driving and having this sensation. This is the really interesting thing about traveling and going to new places. That moment when you're in a place that you've never been before and you have this internal awe of saying, I am here. Suddenly, it's like a moment of consciousness that you lose when you are in your daily a place of work or, or in, in, in the city where you live. When you are in a totally different place and you have this sensation of presence and you say, wow, I am here. I am here. And that's really nice to enjoy because it lasts a few minutes a few seconds. Then you have all these impressions and excitement of knowing the place. But this very depth inside sensation of I am here right now, uh, I think that's what made me fall in love with traveling. And also during my, when I was a teenager, uh, in my house, we received a lot of uh, exchange students. So I was able to learn the, the different cultures, questions, all of that really convinced me to, to study tourism. At the beginning, I was just thinking, of, ah, I want to travel, I want to meet people, I'll be traveling all, all, all the time. But then, of course, I discovered there's, there are many more things to do, planning, policy making, facilitation, and all of those things made me even more passionate about tourism. And of course, the potential it has to impact communities. What gets you really excited? When I can create something new, fueled by the hope of people of uh, doing something really meaningful in their lives, and I'm able to be part of that, like innovating all the time, I can get really easily bored if I do the same for too long. So when I can um, be like iterating things, being creative, and when these things have to do with doing it with more people at the same time, with the hope, the vision, sometimes the utopian view of changing lives, changing a community, that's something that keeps me awake um, at night. And not because of worry, but because of, of excitement and all the ideas floating and, and all the things I, I would like to test and exchange with people. Once again, tourism, because it's a phenomenon that mixes so many things from different aspects, from the social, from the culture, from the environmental, political, economical, it's uh, the perfect scenario or the perfect laboratory to actually try uh, new things and try to do new things, positive things, uh, working with more people. Is there anything you'd like to ask me? Yeah, many things, actually, many <laughs> things. But one, I, I've been uh, asking myself, since I got in touch with you and the incredible uh, educational work you do, is what's been the biggest challenge you had to build such a great educational platform in this field of tourism? There's a recognition that we don't know what we don't know. 
And the biggest challenge, and I think this is true with most challenges, is educating others that there is a better way. We're fortunate in that most that I've encountered that work in the tourism industry love to learn. I think when we recognize that there's a better way to do something, we gravitate toward that. So the biggest challenge for us has been teaching people, okay, education doesn't have to be painful. Education doesn't have to be boring and static and unengaging. And, and it can actually be fun. It can be fun for the user. It can be fun for the student. It can be fun for the organization that's providing it. Getting that message out there. And then once we do that, it's easy to get to work with folks because they work with people that want to share their passion. So teaching folks who we are, why we do what we do, and what the secret is, if there's a mm -hmm. secret, that has been the biggest challenge for us so far. I welcome that as a good challenge. And like being a tourist, that puts us in contact with more people. That gives us a chance to learn from more people. One of my favorite quotes is Robert Heinlein, who wrote, when one teaches, two learn. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it too. Yeah, that's great. We are constantly learning in our organization, and, and that's a challenge that keeps us going. That's great. That's also like the motto I have, and that's why I've, I've, I've got involved in all these educational uh, initiatives as well with universities, with you. And it's because there are so many different perspectives, and, and it's incredible the cultural changes that defy all the conceptions that you've learned in university of you think you know because you're a professional, and then you get to new situations where different people with different perspectives teach you that there, there are other ways. And that's why also one of the, of the things I'm always saying is that maybe sustainability is not the best idea to start with for destinations. Because many times, and especially now that sustainability is becoming mainstream, it's just like a seal and it's like a mental barrier, actually. And for many destinations, it might make sense, but for many others, not. For example, think about poor communities in underdeveloped countries, uh, and you start coming with them with all these imported ideas from outside. Ah, you have to start looking first uh, for the environment and for the society when people doesn't know how they're going to survive for the next day. And then we're right. going to bring tourism here and tourism is going to be the solution and sustainability and blah, 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 blah. Then people, instead of getting engaged with tourism, they of course get the hope they get all this initial drive, but they don't see quick results. They get disappointed. Right. And that tourism, instead of being a promise, ends up being a, a big disappointment for people. And people, I know the cases of many communities uh, that don't want to listen any more about tourism because it's been promised by politicians, by experts, by all type of organizations with all these very refined concepts that really don't land in the ground before start talking. So the first thing and most important thing, as you mentioned, for education is first start listening what people need, what people want, where their challenges. Okay. And then what do I have to contribute? I appreciate this conversation. If folks want to get in touch with you or learn more about your work, how would they do that? Yeah, with pleasure. They can get in touch with me through my website. It's W Santiago, like the name of the city, very geographic name, Santiago R dot com so triple w santiago r dot com they can reach out there to me they can access my newsletter there is totally free totally open they don't even need to subscribe if they don't want they can subscribe of course to get updates and that's the, the best way to to reach out to me then i with pleasure can engage in any conversation voluntarily or start talking about any type of cooperation anybody would be interested about thank you for joining me Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much and have a great and productive day. You too. I'm glad we got to connect. Thanks for tuning in to Business Class. This episode was brought to you by Learn Tourism, the nonprofit academy where we advance the tourism industry with cutting edge training and sustainable practices. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to visit learntourism.org to learn more about our programs and how you can get involved. Until next time, stay curious, continue learning and making a difference through tourism.